Again, we want to welcome everybody. We're so thankful that you are taking the time to uh, join us in today's conversation about graduation ceremonies, uh, the convocation ceremony uh, taking place in December 2024 uh, for the College of Information Science. My name is Kevin Carton, and I have Jana Phillips here with me today. We're going to be presenting and discussing with you um, some of the most important things that we feel uh, our global students should be aware of uh, as it concerns the, the convocation uh, session in December and how to best plan. Again, my name is Kevin Carton. I'm manager of global and international programs at the College of Information Science. And I have Jaina Phillips with me, who is our uh, events manager. And Jane is gonna uh, start off the conversation today uh, and then I'm going to bring it home. So, hello. I guess it's good evening where you are. It's good morning here. Um, I, my name, like you said, is is Jana Phillips, and I'm the events coordinator. I handle the coordination of our convocation. So let's go ahead and go to the first slide. So, okay. one of the things that we have here at the university is we have convocations, and that's. Uh, for the colleges, and then we have a commencement, and that's for the entire university. Um, so convocation events are celebrations of individual achievement where individual graduating student names are called, individual slides are displayed, and an in-person graduates cross the stage. Convocation ceremonies are hosted by the colleges and departments, usually in December and May. Commencement is the university-wide ceremony organized by presidential events and university ceremonies held annually in Arizona Stadium every May in celebration of all graduating Wildcats. This event typically features recognition of high student honors, honorary degrees, and a keynote speaker along with a special finale at the conclusion of the event. Commencement marks the official conferring of degrees, which is the acknowledgement of completion of all degree requirements. The students from each college will be recognized as a whole, not individually. So if you are at our convocation, um, you're, it's going to be just our college. If, you, if you're going to the main commencement as well, and if you're going to be here in May, that's all the students. I'm talking, if there could be as many as 4,000 students in the stadium, and they have everybody by college stand up to be recognized. Um, it's a really great event. If you are thinking about traveling here and you want to get the most bang for your buck, um, you can always attend our May convocation. So you can also attend the main commencement as well. So that's an option you have. Go ahead and change to the next slide. <clears throat> so all students participating in the College of Information Science Convocation Ceremony must register. We have a link on our website. With the information you provide through registration, we create a slide that is shown as part of the ceremony when your name is called. Online students who register will have a slide created and their name will also be called during the ceremony. You usually get to go first. So online students, we create a card for you. Our name reader will say read your name and your slide will come up. And since we live stream this, those who are unable to attend in person will be able to see their slide. If you do not register, you may still attend, but you will not have a personalized slide. So it's very important if you're going to register um, to provide all that information. And so even if you're gonna be online, you can watch it online, re-record it. So you don't have to be up at 2.30 or gosh, it's gonna be earlier now. I can't, th I can't do all the math right now for the time difference, but um, we're, our convocation's at 9 a.m. here, and, and so what time is that there, 9 p.m.? I think late, 9.30 p.m., yep. Oh, that's not too bad. You could actually watch it live. Um, I always think you should have like a, a, a watch party and get all your family together, and when your name's called and your slide's shown, <laughs> then everybody can cheer for you. Um, mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, so you want to make sure when to register, even if you're not going to be here in person, your slide will be shown on the live stream. And it's super important when you're registering to fill out the information as completely as possible. One of the places where we always have people not fill out is the um, phonetic spelling of your name. You, you all have really, and well, for me, I have a hard time pronouncing a lot of your names. And so for 
you to phonetically spell out your name so our name reader will can say your name correctly when he says it is very, very important. And if you don't do that, then you're probably going to get an email from me asking you to do that. And that phonetic spelling is printed on the card. And so that's the reason we want it phonetically spelled out. So let's talk about graduation attire. Robes or regalia are available to order through the campus store. And there are two different robes, one for undergraduates and one for graduate students. Graduate students have a funny little hang hanging thing down on their sleeves. I don't know why. Robes are ordered based on your height and your weight. And for graduate students who cannot afford regalia, the Graduate and Pro Professional Student Council rents regalia for free. There is the contact email on there, and you can check for availability. Do it sooner than later because they really go through those fast. Currently, our college has a limited number of graduation robes for students to borrow on a first come first serve basis. Um, when I say very limited, there's different um, sizes and they were just donated to us. Um, and so that's why we have about 10. Stoles are available to order for colleges, but not for majors or minors. Stoles are optional. Stoles are that, the yellow um, uh, thing going on, on her neck right there. Um, stoles are optional for the attire for the ceremony. As a master's student, you don't have to have a stole. That's not part of your ceremony at all. The color for the College of Information Science is light yellow, or it's actually a lemon yellow. Our college does not have stoles to lend. Um, usually when student buys a stole, they're keeping that forever. So we have never had anybody donate a stole. Hoods are available to order through the campus store. Hoods are required as part of the hooding ceremony for graduate students, both master's and doctoral. Currently, our college has a limited number of graduate hoods, but these are white and not the official light yellow or lemon yellow. We do not have any hoods that are the lemon yellow. Um, these are white. It's just li a little strip of white that is on the where the color is for those. And um, they were donated to us from um, when we were in under a different college and their colors were white. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a white or it's a yellow if you're borrowing it because you're still going to get your degree. <laughs> um, the hooding ceremony is the same. So it just doesn't really matter if you're having to borrow one and it's white. It doesn't matter. Um, tassels are required as part of the undergraduate portion of the ceremony. Move from right to left when directed. And graduate students do not perform this part of the ceremony. So a tassel is optional. The tassel color for the College of Information Science is, again, the light yellow or lemon yellow. So that is a purely optional purchase for you. We do not have any tassels. Nobody ever um, gives donates their tassels. They always buy tassels and they keep their tassels. So that is a purely optional thing for you. It's not part of your ceremony at all. So... So ordering your graduation attire. When you place your regalia order online through the bookstore, um, please set the main campus store as the pickup location. So this is gonna happen if you decide you're gonna fly here, you can order your regalia online and then you're gonna email your receipt of purchase to Kevin and by December 5th. And then he will take that receipt and he will go to the bookstore on your behalf and pick up your regalia and then we'll have it here for you to to pick up um we'll give you detailed information if you do that so you you have all the directions and know where to go and the the dates and timelines um if these pickup times do not work with your schedule you can coordinate a time to meet with kevin before convocation on december 19th this information is also included in the convocation faq and graduate tech checklist documents you will be receiving for having attended this information session. Yes, family and friends are encouraged to attend our convocation and the U of A commencement. Space is limited for fall convocation and students may invite up to four people. We may have unclaimed seats and those are released after the registration deadline on a first registered, first served basis. More space is typically available in spring for convocation guests. The University of Arizona commencement is held in the Arizona Stadium, which has plenty of room for all guests who wish to attend. Graduates sit on the main field while guests sit in the stadium bleachers. Now, the next slide will show you photos 
of the different locations. So at the top left, Crowder Hall is where we are having our fall convocation. This is a limited seating capacity of 500 people, and that includes all our graduates. So, um, so the one below that is the union, and that's where we had it last year, and that one can hold up to 2,000 people. So you can see if you were thinking, do I, if you're going to be graduating in fall, you can always wait and walk in the spring, and you're fine to do that. And that way, like I said, if you're going to fly all the way here, and you just really want to get the most out of your, your travels here, um, there's going to be more room for family. And then over on the right, you're going to see the main commencement at the University of Arizona Stadium. It's huge. There's thousands of people in there. You can see the thousands of graduates down there on the stadium floor. It's actually a really amazing experience. I volunteered. Uh, my daughter graduated from the University of Arizona, and I was at her um, main commencement. And it's it's really an experience. So if you were thinking about it at all, I really recommend coming in May so you can also experience this main commencement because it's really a fun time. So now we're at the graduation checklist. So make sure you're eligible, check the requirements that pertain to your degree. Students cannot graduate from the University of Arizona if a degree requirements have not been met, even if they participate in a college convocation or U of A commencement ceremony. So be sure to reach out to your advisor with questions. Get your regalia from the campus store. Regalia and all other graduation items can be purchased year-round at the campus store. Grad Fest is held twice a year in the fall and spring and makes getting ready for graduation easy and convenient as your one-stop destination for graduation essentials. That one is coming up on October 22nd and 23rd. Register for your graduation ceremony. So important. So if you decide to come in May, um, you are going to have to register for the University of Arizona commencement held only in May, and that's usually available mid-March, and graduation eligible students will be emailed a notification, and register for the College of Information Science convocation. Um, that, again, in December 19th is um, our date for fall, and that's from 9 to 11 a.m. in Crowder Hall, and that's that's available now to register by December 9th. Um, receive your diploma. Diplomas are sent approximately two to three weeks after your degree is posted. So um, I, I guess for your, our international students, we, we get them all together and we send them all in one package because we don't want anybody to get lost. But usually to ensure your, your diplomas um, sent to you correctly, there's a, a diploma address and you access. But um, for international students, I guess we send those all together, right, Kevin? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yeah, we'll right. be sent. Yes. Yeah, so, and it, and typically they're going to come later than two to three weeks right. after your degree is posted. Two to three if, weeks is a normal when we're not sending it additionally um, to international address. Right. So. Yeah, what we found is that, <clears throat> excuse me, shipping them in bulk to our global partners uh, who then ship them directly to you, mm -hmm. the graduates, uh, we have a much better success rate in the diplomas actually landing at the receivers and um, for you graduates to actually receive those. So mm -hmm. um, we're keeping you all in mind and making sure that we're doing what's best in terms of getting them to you. So even though there's a little bit of a delay, at least uh, we're, we're ensuring that they get to you. Yeah. So I just wanted to follow up with uh, a reminder, uh, as Jana was saying about the grad path, uh, we want to ensure that your graduation term is correct, and we also want to ensure that you've submitted the required grad path forms needed to graduate. Oops, excuse me. So um, in terms of your graduation term and you access, you must ensure that the expected graduation term uh, is reflecting correctly. If it's not, you will need to update your expected graduation term by modifying your plan of study in the grad path forms. For more information, you can refer to the GradPath user guide, or you can go to our GradPath walkthrough video, which is what I would recommend um, as someone who's fairly new to the uh, College of Information Science and the GradPath um, uh, walkthroughs. I would say the video uh, is probably the easiest for me to uh, gain a quick understanding of what's needing to be done. So that would be my recommendation. Also, we will be sending this uh, PowerPoint presentation as well, so you'll have access to these links. So. I want to make sure that you know you're getting everything needed following this session to follow up on these things that we're recommending that you take care of. 
Again, just to confirm, as it concerns the grad path forms, you need to submit the following and ensure that they're improved. The responsible conduct of research form, which should have been completed during your first semester, the plan of study form, which should have been submitted by the end of your third semester, and then the master specialist committee appointment form. Um, if you haven't done that yet, please note that it doesn't take long. Um, it's essentially uh, confirming that you're not doing a thesis. And then you can note here, that the master specialist completion confirmation form is submitted by the program coordinating team. So that's something that you do not need to complete. In other words, it's just these top three forms that you're needing to complete um, in order to make sure that you're ready to go for graduation uh, and convocation. As it concerns accommodations, the University of Arizona does not provide accommodations for graduation or for convocation. However, uh, we do have a lot of hotels that are very close to campus, the Marriott Tucson University Park, the Aloft Tucson University and the Graduate Hotel are all popular uh, accommodations uh, within walking distance from the university. And we also have the Visit Tucson website, uh, which is another great resource for finding accommodations, as well as other things that you might be interested in exploring during your time here in Tucson. As a general rule of thumbs, hotels, uh, you typically have to be at least 18 years old to reserve a room. Sometimes hotels will be 25 years old, so it's going to be important to look into that prior to uh, reserving uh, your accommodations and coming to the United States. Essentially, we want to make sure that you're thinking about these things and planning ahead. Okay, since you'll be attending a graduation ceremony, um, the B2 visa, uh, which is for tourism and visiting family and friends, is likely the most appropriate. This visa allows you to enter the U.S. for short-term stays, including attending events like graduation. Uh, we want you to note that the University of Arizona plays no influence in the visa appointment wait times um, reflected on the United States Department of State website, which I know can be challenging and frustrating to navigate. So we're going to discuss a little bit more about visas and wait times and, and you know, different things that you may be uh, thinking and keeping in mind. So the following documents are going to be required as it concerns obtaining a uh, non-immigrant visitor visa. You'll need your passport, which you'll want to ensure that is valid for at least six months beyond your planned stay in the U.S. You're going to need to complete the DS-160 form, which is essentially the online non-immigrant visa application form. So that, that's essentially like your application form, um, and that's going to be done on the U.S. Department of State website. You'll need to play, pay a visa fee. Um, which is non-refundable, um, and you'll want to make sure that you keep that receipt as a proof of payment. Uh, you'll need to schedule a visa appointment at the U.S. Embassy or consulate in your home country and print that confirmation. Um, you'll We recommend bringing with you to the appointment graduation invitation or proof. So, you know, email um, for this information session and email for attending convocation, printing off the actual website or uh, that lists the convocation information details, or we can also provide you with a letter from the university confirming that your graduation um, and your invitation to attend the ceremony. Um, more information to come on that uh, in the following slides and in this discussion. You'll want to have some financial proof, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And then we want to really emphasize that during any visa appointments, really um, creating and establishing ties to your home country is going to be important. So that can be preparing evidence that demonstrates your intention to return back home after the ceremony, such as perhaps you have a job offer now that you're a recent graduate. Maybe you own property or you're renting property. Um, any documentation that shows that you have obligations that you're returning back to are going to help in um, getting that visa request approved. Um, and again, the College of Information Science can provide you with a letter of support with graduation information, um, and that can be requested through a survey uh, that you'll be receiving. That survey is included in the FAQ as well as the graduation checklist. So we're trying to provide... Uh, you know, insight and direction on all the resources that we're handing out to you. Okay, let's see here. Next slide. Okay, so as we all know, um, visa wait times can be super stressful, right? So what do we do if the interview wait time does not allow for enough uh, time to complete the interview before December's convocation? 
So you can check for emergency visa appointments on the website. So you can try to expedite the request. Uh, many US embassies and consulates offer an expedited visa appointment for urgent situations, including attending a once in a lifetime event like a graduation. So checking your specific embassy or consulate's website in your home country to see if you qualify for an expedited appointment is gonna probably be your first move. Um, following that, um, you can you can try to be as creative uh, as needed. So you can look to see if there's alternative locations. Uh, some U.S. embassies and consulates may have shorter wait times. If possible, you can check the wait times at other uh, U.S. consulates in your countries or neighboring countries where you may be able to apply. I know that third country applications uh, are not a, an attractive idea. Um, but, you know, I also have many friends from interesting countries or countries all over the world. My partner's from Iran. And any time that we travel, um, you know, if, if he's in Iran and he's wanting to come over to the U.S., they actually have to go to Turkey in order to get uh, the visa approved. So another option, again, not a, not the most attractive or appealing, but it can work, would be a third country visa application. And um, if your country's wait time in India is too long, you may consider applying for a U.S. visa in another bordering country where can, you can legally travel and the wait time is shorter. This can be a little bit more complex as you need to meet the country's entry requirements and prove ties to your home country just to get to that country. But it's also a viable option that has proven to work in the past. Now, you know, if if you're not willing to jump the hurdles that come along um, sometimes when trying to apply for a visa, then you can always look at the non-visa alternatives, such as attending convocation online. Um, and as Jana said, if you're interested in attending convocation online, um, but you're unable to secure a visa, you're more than welcome to um, watch online and join us. Students who register will be asked to submit a photo, which can then be used when their name is called during the ceremony, um, a link on the on the website uh, for the day of conversation, or excuse me, there's a link on the website for the day of convocation so you can gather around with your family and friends to celebrate from home. Um, alternatively, you could also pl plan to attend May commencement. Like Jana said, that gives you a little bit more time in terms of uh, securing a visa. So that's certainly an, um, an option. Uh, and then otherwise, um, if it becomes unclear or if it becomes clear that attending the December convocation is not possible due to visa delays, you can always consider planning for a future trip to the U.S. to celebrate your graduation in another meaningful way, such as coming during homecoming celebrations or an alumni event or planning a visit to the U of A when the visa is more attainable. And... When filling out the visa application, since you're already a, you've already graduated, your status is no longer that of a student. So in the present work education slash training information section, you should select the option that best reflects your current situation after graduating. It's really important that you're going to be um, direct, straightforward, and most importantly, honest. So if you are working, you'll select the option that best aligns with your current job or your profession. If you're unemployed but seeking work, then we're going to recommend that you answer accurately by selecting not employed, uh, and then you can um, let them know that you're currently seeking work. Being unemployed at the time of the visa application does not automatically compromise your ability to obtain a visa, but it may raise additional scrutiny regarding your ties to your home country and financial stabilities uh, during your stay in the U.S. So if you currently have any part-time job that you'd be returning to upon coming back home to India, make sure that you're putting in whatever that job is. Um, again, the more ties that you can create to your home country, um, the more likelihood that your visa is going to be approved. In terms of the U.S. point of contact for the visa application, by all means, you're more than welcome to use my uh, name um, and information, which is provided here, as well as in the FAQ uh, paperwork that we'll be sending following this. I know that a lot of students are interested in meeting with faculty during the convocation experience, so we just wanted to, to take an opportunity to let you know that there will be a reception immediately following the convocation in which the College of Information Science faculty are encouraged to attend and mingle with students. This is also a great opportunity to meet other graduates who studied in your class um, and departmental staff, such as Jaina and myself, um, that you've interacted with uh, during your time as a student. 
Okay, and then uh, one question that you may have is, uh, you know, the financial requirements that are associated with obtaining a visa. So the U.S. government does not specify a set amount of money that you need to show for a B-2 visitor visa, but you do need to be able to demonstrate that you have sufficient funds to cover at least your round-trip airfare, accommodation cost, daily living expenses, such as meals and transportations, and then any other incidental expense, expenses, maybe sightseeing or shopping. So generally what we would advise to show is access to funds that uh, would cover your stay. So for a short trip, that's one to two weeks, um, it could range anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 USD, depending on your planned activities and accommodations. You can provide evidence of funding through bank statements or credit card limits. And while um, health insurance is not required for your stay in the U.S. Uh, we do recommend to have uh, travel health insurance during your stay in the U.S. as uh, health insurance can be very expensive uh, in the United States. So if you do fall ill or you have an accident without health insurance, you could face significant medical bills um, when you're in the U.S. So that's just something to be cogniz cognizant of. Uh, if you come over without health insurance, um, just uh, uh, mind your step and take care of yourself um, because, you know, I know that's always a gamble. I, tra I traveled to Europe this summer and I did not get health insurance and everything was fine. Um, but also Europe tends to have a very different uh, approach to medical care. So I anticipated that if something would have happened, it would not have been a, as expensive as if something were to occur while in the United States. So it's something that we want you to be aware of as you're considering traveling to the U.S., and then just some quick reminders that we already kind of discussed. There's not going to be any airport pickup or accommodation support. We do ask that you plan ahead for your arrival. We're very excited to meet you. We're very excited to welcome and celebrate with you. Um, but there is a limit to how much we're uh, able to accommodate and airport pickups and helping in terms of accommodation support is not something that we're able to, to uh, assist with. And then as it concerns diplomas, I would say two to three months following graduation, they'll be mailed in bulk to your the global partner through which you're studying. And then that global partner um, sends them directly to the student addresses that are provided in this uh, your student center. Again, we want to remind you to register for convocation. I think that Jana said the deadline for that is December 9th, mm -hmm. um, and all of that can be found on the website as well. Uh, so we're going to be sending this to you uh, with the link to register for the event, and it's also on, guess what, our FAQ handout that we'll be sending <laughs> to you. So lots of great information included on that FAQ handout that's going to be coming your way. Um, and as we wrap up, we want to offer everybody an opportunity to ask questions.